Hello everyone, welcome to what's happening in Brazil. We start this edition by taking a look at the country's most recent and relevant news. President Jair Bolsonaro, who traveled to the United States to attend the Summit of the Americas, used the trip to take a motorcycle ride with supporters through the streets of Orlando, Florida. He also attended the inauguration of the Brazilian Vice Consulate in that same city. These events in which Bolsonaro meets supporters to ride motorcycles are not a novelty. But this time, what drew attention was the presence of blogger Alan dos Santos, who is a fugitive of Brazilian justice. In October last year, Brazil's Supreme Court ordered Alan's preventive detention as a development of the inquiry on the dissemination of fake news. On July 13th, the day following the motorcycle ride in Orlando, opposition parties issued a criminal referral against President Jair Bolsonaro and Anderson Torres, Minister of Justice and Public Security, for not informing the Brazilian officials of the presence of the fugitive blogger. Alan dos Santos is a Bolsonaro supporter. He used his social media accounts and YouTube channel to spread denialism on the COVID pandemic and to threaten a Supreme Court minister. Former Odebrecht executive Alexandrino Alencar said attorneys of the car wash operation pressured him to include former President Lula in a plea agreement. The revelation was made in an interview for the documentary Amigo Secreto, which means secret friend in English, about the leakage of conversations between members of the car wash operation. The messages and audios were made public in June 2019 and brought up the force of Lula's conviction. Alexandrino's plea was one of the collaborations on which Lula's condemnation was based. The former president was condemned for corruption and money laundry due to some renovations Odebrecht made in a ranch that, according to the attorneys, Lula owned, even though the state was not under his name. In April last year, Lula's convictions were void and justice decided by the suspension of Sergio Moro, judge in the cases of car wash operation. Brazilian biomes never were so unprotected. That's the conclusion of the environmental organizations and indigenous peoples. The threat to nature is also a threat to native peoples, which are on the front line of protecting forests. Researchers, NGOs and environmentalists from Brazil and around the world are almost unanimous in affirming that the Brazilian environmental policy has reached the rock bottom. In three and a half years under Bolsonaro's rule, the deforestation rate in the country's biomes skyrocketed, in addition to the weakening of environmental inspections. Devastation produces climate phenomena that also affect urban populations, and those who suffer most from droughts and floodings are always the poorest people. For instance, nobody run away from a drought driving a BMW. We don't see mansions being dragged by rainfalls. The climate change is a fabric of poverty and social inequality. Without forests, there is no climate safety for the world. And without indigenous people, there is no preservation. According to the Social Environmental Institute, deforestation on indigenous lands rose 138% since Bolsonaro assumed the presidency. Nevertheless, the devastation of the areas occupied by native peoples is 20 times lower than in private properties. But this preservation comes at the cost of a lot of violence. According to the Pastoral Land Commission, in 2021, native peoples were the main victims of murders, indirect deaths, and violent episodes caused by rural conflicts. Environmental policies are being dismantled today. Indigenous peoples are the first to be affected because they are in charge of the protection of their territories, which they see as part of their bodies and lives. There is a political project led by the executive power to weaken indigenous and environmental policy in the name of big corporations and an economy that benefits a specific political or economic group. In this context, indigenous peoples are making arrangements to launch candidates in the coming elections. The goal is to reverse the picture of underrepresentation in Congress. It has only one indigenous federal deputy, Joenia Wapichana. So we need to keep in mind that indigenous peoples have a fundamental role in combating global warming and climate change. 
We should also keep in mind that this political project is killing, contaminating and destroying lives. First, native people will be affected since we are there, but the consequences will be felt by all humanity. In downtown São Paulo, there is an area popularly known as Cracolândia. It's marked by the presence of drug addicts, misery and violent actions by the police. But cultural collectives want to change this reality and promote dignity for people that live there. Today, I am a musician. I have always been. They believed in me. I play the cavaquinho, the guitar, the bass and the keyboard. I am part of the group, from which I get my monthly income. Rogério had the opportunity to dream after being introduced to the initiative Pagode na Lata. He lives in Cracolândia, an area in the city of São Paulo, where there is an intense concentration of drug addicts on the streets. He was there during all the recent police operations in the region, marked by the use of violence. In all these operations, Rogério lost his work tools, such as scissors and shavers. The Pagodi Musical Initiative is what gives him the income he needs to buy everything again. The group is currently making shows at museums, cultural institutions and centers. This initiative began in 2017 as a result of an articulation between drug addicts and former workers at Cracolândia. When you are playing, you lay down the smoking pipe. At most, the pipe will become the drumstick of the tambourine. That's the strategy that Pagode brings. Besides Pagode na Lata, other initiatives try to give back life and hope to a region that is under a constant war-like scenario. Biriku is a group that has 30 artists. They get income from fine art and poster printings. Tem Sentimento is a collective led by female strength. Through the sewing and making of panties, bags and t-shirts, its 11 members manage to ensure financial survival at this time of crisis. In addition, they voluntarily sue for those in need. They walk the streets donating masks and cocoons, which are a kind of thermal bath for homeless people. What really has an effect on this population is an approach through public policies. So there is no way of we fantasizing. We do what is possible to be done, but the solution is through public policies. Currently, the art and culture collectives gather people in the Mungunza Theater, where solidarity initiatives are organized. All this work is magnificent. It is harm reduction, you know. The recipe you are gonna learn is perfect for those who don't want to wash a lot of dishes. And you can prepare it easy to find ingredients, spaghetti, sauce and canned sardines. Today's recipe is this super easy pasta. You probably have asked yourself before, why don't we cook spaghetti and sauce in the same pan? That's exactly what I'm gonna teach you today. A tip to make it go right is to use a wide pan in which the spaghetti fits. See? You will see that the trick of this pasta is to have a kettle with boiling water on the side of the stove. It doesn't have to be an electric kettle like mine, it can be a conventional one. But it is important to have this boiling water, because as the sauce cooks and reduces, if necessary, you add a little more hot water. Use the sardines oil to braise the onion, parsley stems and chive stems. After it, add garlic. Then add diced tomatoes and tomato puree. Braise it all well, let the tomato cook a bit, soften. Now I'm gonna pour water, but it can't be too much. We're gonna let the sauce a liquid one, right to the point to cook the spaghetti, but avoiding excess, because if you use a lot of water, the spaghetti will overcook and the sauce will be thin. Wait until it boils and add the spaghetti. 
I will use the timer to monitor the spaghetti cooking time, which is, in this case, 7 minutes. But since we are cooking it directly in the sauce, maybe it takes longer. Therefore, I will taste the spaghetti after 7 minutes. It began to stick in the bottom of the pan, so I'm gonna pour hot water. I will add grated zucchini so that the spaghetti will be more nourishing. You can also use carrot or any other vegetables. Then add the sardines, parsley, chives and pepper. That's ready! Did you like the show? So hit the like button and share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to receive notifications. We'll see you next week.